Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Family Matters. My name is Purity Museo. Laikipia County is one of the 47 counties in the country, county number 031, and it's located on the equator of the former Great Rift Valley province. It's not been spared by the coronavirus pandemic and, of course, recording more cases, even as the country, the number of cases in the country continues to surge. Now, how is the county prepared in terms of the bed capacity? How is it responding, especially to the patients that have already uh, been affected? affected by this deadly virus. Let's talk about the economic impact of COVID-19 in this county that is majorly known for tourism and also agricultural activities that goes on here. Now joining us on this show is Laikipia County Governor Deritu Murethi who will be telling us more on what the county government especially is doing to respond to this pandemic and trying to uh, stop the fast spreading of COVID-19 especially at this particular county. Thank you so much sir for making time for us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes and I'll start by asking you how this has changed your life in terms of the new normal for you since the pandemic. What are some of the things that have had to change for you individually as a person and also even as a county boss? Um, well, certainly we all have had to change the way we interact with one another uh, to minimize social interaction um, in the homesteads, at, in the workplace, um, out in business premises and so on. Um, in addition, the focus of government, a lot of the activity of government now and the resources are focused on the management of this issue. So if you look, for example, in the last quarter, um, look at the, we re reorganized our budget um, to be able, you know, upwards of 700 million, moving monies from, you know, uh, certain activities to be able to put more resources on the health sector. Um, and certainly um, it has brought economic activity, you know, it has brought it down, um, resulting in job losses and so on. So it's quite a devastating uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lake Ipia County recorded its first case of COVID-19 last month, but the country recorded its very first case of coronavirus in March. So let's talk about trying to convince uh, your people that there is corona and it could actually spread to the county of Lake Ipia. How easy or difficult was that? Uh, I would say difficult. Uh, many people were a bit skeptical about this virus um, and they were seeing uh, you know, from a distance. So you, you would try to explain to citizens to look at, say, Italy or look at the U.S. And that was distant and remote to them. So the disease is here. Um, and I say unfortunate because I do believe that as citizens, as individuals, we could have and we still can do more to respect what um, the medics, uh, the medical personnel are telling us. Simple things. Um, uh, sanitizing, uh, wearing masks and things like that, which uh, go uh, you know, a very long way in assisting to minimize uh, the spread of this disease. But the disease is here with us and, and certainly the economic impact of it is, is very, very significant indeed. Let's, let, let me give you an example with Nairobi County. When the cases were actually up to 500, uh, Kenyans in Nairobi County were asking, were still not believing there is coronavirus in that particular county until they hit almost 10,000 is when now everybody is scared that there is corona in Nairobi and in the country. Now here, there are about 69 cases of COVID-19, quite a small number. So um, do we, as a county government, is there a way, do we have a sensitization programs to residents and trying to make them convinced that there is corona? And how is the uptake of that? Indeed we do. We, we in many, many ways, beginning with um, going out. We, we have um, teams that go out in various places, uh, you know, uh, explaining to people. Uh, we have worked with the clergy, again, to try and convince people. We have regular radio programming uh, on local radio, again, to attempt to persuade people. We have a weekly citizen briefing uh, Thursday afternoons at 4 o'clock, 
again intended to give citizens an update of what is going on. Um, still, as I said, I find that we, as citizens, we can do more. In fact, it is forcing us to be more strict in terms of enforcement procedure. Um, and we would have preferred that citizens, you know, take the thing seriously um, so that we are not having to arrest people and things of that kind. Uh, but unfortunately, in some circumstances, we are having to do so. Uh, so it's not easy. Um, and we just have to continue. In any case, the purpose of government is the protection of life as a cardinal uh, priority number one. And therefore, it is our responsibility right. to, to yeah. do so. And within a month, you've recorded almost 60 cases of coronavirus. Uh, would you say uh, on, uh, sixth, uh, last month, the 6th of July, the head of state okayed the movement of people from the four counties that were under a partial lockdown, uh, where people could not move in and out of those counties. Would you say somehow the, this decision has contributed to now increasing number of coronavirus in Lake Kipia County? The, the decision to open the economy is, is a painful decision because it does increase the possibility of spread, but you may not really be able to keep the economy closed for a very long period of time, because then you open yourself up to other really big challenges, including people dying for, from hunger and other issues like that. So you have to balance. Uh, so the opening up uh, did perhaps contribute. Uh, although it's also fair to say that in most of the counties, we had already gone into the phase of, we say, community transmission meaning that there has been somebody, for instance, if you look here, these 59 cases, what you will find is that uh, probably as many as 20 or 20 something have to do with one case, which was a very early case, uh, and unfortunately uh, the person uh, died. But these are her primary contacts and people who are taking, she was an elderly woman, people who are taking care of her. So. The, the, we are already in the phase of community transmission, meaning the diseases within the, the, the county. Uh, I would also hasten to add that I think across the country, the, there probably are many more who have it, but we don't know yet because we haven't gotten to their tests. Uh, so the big issue is how can we ramp up tests I mean, I know uh, 260, 270,000 is a significant sample, but I think we need to be in the 5, 000, uh, 5 million rather range for us to get a, a clear idea as to how widespread uh, this disease is uh, in the population. But let's talk about the capacity that you've uh, built because we expect the number of COVID-19 to increase, honestly, uh, as we continue to contact trace, especially those who have tested positive. So uh, in terms of isolation centers, HDU uh, centers, what, where are we as, as a county? Well, I think we are doing reasonably well. Um, our target is 428. Uh, beds. And, and I hasten, I mean, I think we should be explain that it's not just a bed. Eh? You have to think about many things that go with it. The lean end, the, the, the what have you. you. In particular, you also have to think about staff who are managing these cases. Um, so preparedness is not just about beds. Bed is, a, is like a symbol of, of the whole thing. So you need beds, you need to make sure that they're properly kitted out. Uh, you have to think about capacity to feed the patients. You have to think about where the medics themselves are going to stay, because you don't want them to go back into the community during the period that they are managing the patients. You don't want them to go back to their homesteads. You'd prefer that, and that's what actually we're doing. So we, we, we have a hotel here in Anyuki, for instance, where the medics are staying so that we, we minimize the risk to their family. Um, so 300 and um, no, 428 uh, beds uh, here in Nanyuki, just a short distance from where we are, the Nanyuki Hospital Annex, which is a, a, a new space. I mean, the space exists, but it's new in terms of its use as a medical facility, uh, 200 beds there, and also we have some capacity in one side uh, for quarantine. Uh, within the main hospital itself, we 
have 17 bed uh, critical care unit, uh, you know, uh, 12 beds being HDU uh, and, and the rest being ICU. Uh, we also have a new, uh, well, frankly, a new hospital, uh, the mother child, uh, which is also coming in handy, uh, another 100 beds there. And on the Nyahururu side, a similar uh, capacity. So we are looking at, um, at 428 beds. And we are looking at um, uh, ultimately close to 30 uh, in ICU capacity. But right now, if you in here in this, in this hospital in Anyuki, a 17 bed critical care unit. Of course, also on the private side, uh, the cottage hospital also has a capacity uh, for about four. Uh, uh, critical care uh, patients. Uh, but I, I want to, to explain to Kenyans that ultimately we all have to take responsibility and accept to change some of our behavior uh, to minimize uh, social contact and where it cannot be avoided then to take the necessary precautions. Um, and, and that really is the, is the main uh, shall I say, the main way in which we will overcome uh, uh, this disease. The resources that the county government is using, let's say the, the money it's pumping into the health sector to respond to COVID-19, how much are we talking about, and what we received from the national government, I think Alekipia County got about 34 million shillings? Yeah. On 36 million. That money was to pay allowances for three months for our staff, uh, special allowances for the health staff. Um, we also did get 56 million uh, to go into towards the costs of improving or, or enlarging the capacity for isolation and quarantine and critical care. Um, Nikidogo, that's the point. But every little bit helps. Um, on, the, on the broader debate, we are of course quite disappointed that our equitable share, you know, treasury is, is not releasing. Uh, I hope many Kenyans know that um, Treasury is holding on to close to 40 billion from last financial year, completely, uh, you know, in, uh, in against the law, against the constitution. Uh, so they didn't release monies for June. They have not released our monies for July, and that is putting a lot of strain. And I think you have already begun to see unrest in terms of labour unrest in, in in a number of counties. Uh, so unfortunately, the way the Treasury is going about it is creating a really big crisis. Um, and unless we are able to resolve it, I hope in this coming week, uh, then we'll see a very tough August and, 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 and going forward. Um, now, of course, as, as, as a governor, you know, I know we are all experiencing challenges in, uh, in, uh, you know, in, in taxation. Uh, that tax, tax revenues have declined. But even with that, I do find that the, honestly the behavior of Treasury is, is absolutely unreasonable and it is putting Kenyans at risk. I mean, for instance, we, they were in the market last week. Uh, you know, government borrows every week. They were in the market last week. I believe they borrowed close to 100, 140 billion. What did they do with it? Can there surely be a bigger priority today in Kenya than fighting this disease? So I find that the way they're going about it is, is an opening up Kenyans to a very big risk, very grave risk, and it's not necessary. Uh, let's talk about uh, caring for uh, the frontline workers. As of last week, about 500 uh, contracted the virus in the country, that is. And I do understand in the county of Lake Ipia, about three of them uh, tested positive for coronavirus. And most of them have been coming out complaining about a uh, lack of enough PPE, substandard, the pers personal uh, protective equipment, and many more challenges, including uh, the issue to do with understaffing, payment of allowances. Is that a challenge in this county, or how are you protecting the frontline workers? Let me start with the payment of allowances. As I already explained, we have paid, um, um, uh, or rather we did get the 36 million to add on to it. Uh, here locally, uh, we also are processing, um, we, uh, we have a program 
a reward program called Spot Award. Um, so they'll also get something from that. Um, in terms of PPEs and the quality of PPE, um, we do have a PPE. Uh, could we do more? I think we must continue to do more um, to ensure that staff are protected. Um, and as I said, we have made arrangements so that the staff who are managing COVID patients for the period that they are involved, they don't necessarily stay with their families. Uh, again, as a way to protect uh, or minimize the risk uh, to their families. Um, we, as a country, I think we must continue to look at improving um, the quality of PPEs. Uh, what we've been doing ourselves uh, from the very beginning, uh, we, we started to produce uh, hazmat uh, outfits with Dead and Kemadi University. Uh, we were able to identify, uh, frankly, hundreds of Lycopians who can and who are producing uh, uh, face masks and other, and other things like that. We have seen quite a bit of innovation uh, amongst our people, uh, including uh, sanitization boots, including contactless hand washing stations. Um, as you know, our ventilator that we are producing with Kemadi University is now undergoing uh, tests in a clinical situation. Uh, so that then it can be certified for mass production. So we've seen quite a bit of innovation amongst people and we want to encourage that um, because really it's up to us. We also uh, have seen a bit of research um, and just now Mpala Research Station um, and Oxford University and other partners uh, have, are doing some research that will allow us to understand a little bit more the way, um, what, what proportion of the population has been infected and, and uh, including things like uh, the immunity, does it last or is it transient as sometimes it has seemed, meaning if you get the COVID, you heal, uh, you, you, you therefore have developed the antibodies, but maybe three, four months down the line, you, you, you test positive again. Um, so that is very worrisome. If, if the immunity is not very long lasting. Uh, so we've seen all of that. Uh, we are in, in serious conversation uh, with the Pharmacy and Poisons Board and their agent uh, of, of, of Camry uh, to allow us to use uh, the rapid test. Now we know that rapid care test is more for scientific purposes uh, than, um, than uh, clinical but we still would have preferred to be able to use it because it can give us some early or a way of understanding how widespread. And this rapid uh, test is very, is very simple. I mean, you take a little, uh, you know, a little drop of blood and you put on it and, and, and within 10 minutes you can know. Right. And, and I, how I wish these scientists at uh, Camry and at the Pharmacy and Poisons Board could move faster so that they allow us to use these rapid tests. We agree, not for clinical purposes, but for scientific reasons, so that we can be able to know, even as of now, how widespread, what proportion of the population has already, say, for example, been infected and, uh, and healed. And how are you, as a county government, caring for patients uh, with COVID-19? Is there research innovations going on, on, especially on the treatment, or what kind of uh, treatment care are you offering to them? Like 80% of our patients are asymptomatic, meaning that they are not really exhibiting symptoms. And the reason, for example, we have them in the hospital is that a number of cases, their home circumstance makes it difficult for them to self-isolate. And that's why uh, we, we have them in the, in the annex uh, hospital. Uh, but about 80% of the total number of cases are asymptomatic, meaning when you meet the person, they're not exhibiting any, any signs of disease, yet uh, they have it. And, and I think that that's also a challenge because um, many of us uh, may have it and, and we don't know. And, uh, and, and even more dangerous is that even somebody who is asymptomatic, I mean somebody who is sick but not showing any signs of sickness, has the ability to spread the disease. And, and that's why it's such a dangerous and risky thing. Let's talk about innovations. Uh, what is locally available and what do you as a governor challenge 
Lycopians like to really avail before you talk of uh, or think of importing? Well, in fact, you see, most of the things, perhaps save for some medicines, uh, are and can be made locally. I mean, take the simple um, hand washing stations, contactless, and, and our young men and women are doing that. Take face masks, and uh, many folks now uh, have been certified by CABS that they are producing a good quality um, uh, masks. Um, as I already uh, pointed out, we are right now uh, doing basically clinical tests for the ventilator uh, that we've made with Dead and Kemadi. So I believe myself that there is a lot of room uh, for innovation and, and I would like to encourage Kenyans uh, to step forward I think we have to begin believing in ourselves that not, uh, not we can produce and we can produce to high quality and we can sell to outside markets and, and we have seen it with our own eyes here in Lakipia. All right, so let's talk about the economic impact because um, most Kenyans have come out to uh, really say they have lost their jobs and I'm sure that is not exceptional in this county. So how many people are we talking about how coronavirus has impacted especially this county being an agricultural uh, sector, a county and also known for its tourism with a lot of tourist attraction sites. How is it faring on this time of COVID-19? If I start on the agricultural sector, you know that uh, when uh, international transport was curtailed, uh, a lot of flower farms here uh, uh, you know, had a, long, a very hard time. Basically the market stopped, although now it has opened up a little bit and a number of them are back in production. On the tourism side, obviously many hotels are closed because it's simply not possible uh, for tourists to come. Uh, so that sector in particular has been really hard hit and it has a ripple effect because tour guides uh, because people selling curios, because people selling food into tourism facilities. All of these individuals have been negatively impacted. And as I said, our guesstimate is anywhere between 15 and 20,000 jobs uh, that have been f affected. We've entered into arrangements with a number of leading banks in Kenya to support uh, businesses that are reopening uh, with working capital. And it is working capital that is, uh, you know, we are providing a subsidy so that we bring the cost of credit uh, from around 12% to around 7% or 7 uh, 7.5% uh, so that we give our small businesses a fighting chance um, and to try and recover and bring back the job. We are winding up, but I'm welcoming you to maybe share with us some of the challenges as a county you encountering as you respond to this coronavirus. And lastly, your parting shot uh, to the people, residents of Lake Ipia County here and Kenyans at large. We will not succumb, we will overcome this, uh, this challenge. And we will do so by acting uh, properly, by acting together, uh, by taking responsibility we will do so by innovating, so we will overcome uh, corona, but it does require us to you know, change our behavior and be mindful um, that you know, particularly young people, um, young people are sort of like super carriers, and this disease is affecting older people, particularly people with underlying conditions like diabetes and hypertension. So if your mom or dad or uncle or neighbor you know, has high blood pressure. Why do you need to go and visit them now? Why can't you wait for a few months? Because these are the individuals. If you look uh, nationally, um, the persons who have died, nearly 300 people, the main drivers of those deaths have been, uh, as I said, uh, hypertension and diabetes. So we have to be really, really careful in protecting the elderly members of our society. But we must not lose hope. Uh, what we need to do is, is act responsibly um, and I'm sure we shall overcome. We shall overcome and act responsibly. I think it's a good way to end our show tonight. Thank you, very much. Thank you so much. Like keep your county governor, Narito Morithi, for your time. We highly appreciate. And of course, that brings us to the end of our program that has been like keep your county governor, Narito Morithi, just telling us on the county preparedness and the challenges and the impact the coronavirus has had, especially on the economy of this county, mostly known for its tourism and agricultural activities that goes on here. Thank you once again for making time for Family Matters tonight. My name is Purity Moseo. Do enjoy the rest of our programming.